Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about floating voltages in electronics and what a floating voltage is, why they're not a good thing, and two different ways that we can um, sort of prevent them from happening. A floating voltage is when we have a signal like this um, this line here in green coming from pin 1 of a sensor to pin 3 of this Arduino microcontroller. And this signal is coming from the sensor directly into the Arduino and we don't know what the voltage is on it. it it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 5 volts. And because, because we don't know where it is, it's said to be floating. If we were to take a, a multimeter and just disconnect the power from from VCC and ground here, we have no idea what that voltage is going to be. It's going to be somewhere in between ground and 5 volts. And the reason for that is because voltage likes to leak out of the pins in a microcontroller and onto the line, but also if this is a really long piece of wire, it acts like an antenna and it picks up all kinds of interference. And so that interference can also add to add to the voltage or subtract from the voltage, depending on which way you look at it. Um, so it's it's generally not not sort of a good thing to have. How can we um, how can we combat this? Well, we've got a we've got a couple of tricks up our sleeve. We can pull this um this stray voltage we can pull it down to ground and that way whenever this this sensor here this is a an infrared sensor so whenever it detects infrared light it will make pin one here the output pin it'll make it go high so let's let's go to the graph and and check out what that could look like um, Let's just make the point a little smaller, like that big. So we've got. Let's do let's do the floating signal first. The floating signal could be anywhere in sort of this kind of a, a band, um, and it's not good because it could be low, it could be high, it could be somewhere in between. In which case, the microcontroller just makes a random guess, and that's that's generally a bad thing because well we don't know what the signal is supposed to be um, let's do let's do a signal with a pull down resistor what a pull down resistor is what it what it does is say we've got a, a signal that's sort of floating in the middle here a pull down resistor likes to pull the voltage down to ground so it goes beneath this low threshold and so the microcontroller goes oh yes, that signal is definitely meant to be a zero or a false or a low. And so it's sort of the signal stays down here kind of low until let's say we get a flash of infrared light. It bounces up high, really, really high. And it goes, the key thing is it goes above the high threshold here because the sensor pulls it high. And then when the light goes away, it comes back down and it goes beneath the low threshold again. And that's because the pull down resistor is pulling the voltage down to ground. Um, and, and that's kind of, that's, that's how a pull down resistor works. Let's, let's take a look at what they actually look like. So we'll go in and we'll add a resistor to the circuit. Point seven K. So we'll add it right there and we'll hook it up with some lines. So we can see that we have a voltage coming in. We've got a resistor that slowly pulls the voltage down to ground. And if the, um, if, if we do get a, a, a high signal come in from the sensor, a little bit of the voltage is going to leak out of here and go down to ground, but most of it is going to, 
most of it is going to stay inside the sensor line and be present on this pin here, which is how we get almost 5 volts up here. The, the key thing is that we cross the high threshold. Um, and that's, that's how, um, that's kind of how a pull down resistor works. It pulls the voltage down, which is sort of in the name. Uh, I mentioned that there were, there was another technique that we, we could use. Um, there's two techniques. The other one is a pull up resistor. And the way how that works is it pulls the voltage up to VCC. And that looks something like this. So this floating voltage gets pulled up high to 5 volts. And then if the um, sensor sees no light, then it actually pulls the, the, the sensor itself pulls the, um, the voltage down to ground. And if it does see light, well, then it pushes the voltage up to high. Um, many sensors will include pull-up or pull-down resistors inside them. And many microcontrollers also do the same. And you, you have the options of turning them on or off. But sometimes we just don't know what's available to us at the time. So it makes sense to just put it into the circuit so that we, we have absolute control over what's going on. Let's take a look at what a pull-up resistor looks like on the, the um, fake oscilloscope here. So, pull-down signal, let's do pull-up signal. So we've got our floating, we've got our floating voltage, but a pull-up resistor pulls the voltage. Let's do that again, because that is kind of silly. So pull-up resistor, I really can't draw tonight. Pull-up resistor pulls the voltage up high. And then when the sensor um, when the sensor sees the light, or when it doesn't see the light, depending on how the logic in the sensor works, it will actually pull the voltage down and it will go to almost ground. And then it bounces back up again. And so the, the pull-up resistor likes to pull the voltage up high. Um, pull-up resistors are often used when we have what's called inverted logic. Um, and pull-down resistors are used when we have just uh, normal logic. And what do I mean by normal and inverted logic? Well, if we see a low here, we generally think of that as being um, false on a true or false kind of a scale. So we'll, we'll generally think of this as being zero or false in digital logic, and up high would be true or one in digital logic. But there's also the option to have it inverted, where high actually means um, high means false and low means true. And you'll see this quite a lot actually on the reset switch. Uh, the reset switch will often be high, meaning that there is no there's there's no button being pushed. And then when you push the button, the voltage goes down low, and that tells the controller, oh. I'd better reset myself. And so that's, um, that's inverted logic. Uh, and really, you just want to take a look at data sheets to see which style of logic your sensor uses. And if you have free choice, go with, with, their, go with whichever is more comfortable for you. Uh, personally, I like using pull-down resistors and conventional logic, but others like to use inverted logic and pull-up resistors. And it also, it also depends a lot on your circumstances as well. 